Hi everyone, this is Lady T with Lady T Speaks TV, where we talk about relationships. I've uh, been in the middle of a series now. It, um, we're talking about abusive relationship, domestic violence, um, abusive intimate relationships. And so I wanted to get back on here today. In this video, I want to talk about anxiety and what anxiety um, can do. Uh, but before we get into the discussion about anxiety, I wanted to give you some scriptures here that will um, that you can pray over yourself. Um, during this coronavirus outbreak, uh, we find that we've been confined to our homes. And I think that people are more concerned about themselves when in, in actuality, we really should be concerned about those who are in abusive situations and in situations where now they really can't get out um, and have any type of relief because they're in the home with the abuser. And so I wanted to come on here to encourage you all today. Um, I know that there is a not a lot um, you're able to do about getting out. And what I mean by that is sometimes people don't have the means, the resources, or the money to leave those situations, those abusive situations. And so what do you do in the meantime? Um, and that's what I wanted to talk about uh, today. I'll probably put up two videos uh, because I don't want it to be long. Um, but I wanted to just share with you some scriptures today and also talk about anxiety because anxiety will heighten not only just for you the person who may be the victim and your children but even for the abuser um, because now there are not any outlets a lot of people who are abusive you know they drink not all but some and then they you know do other type of illegal activity and so that's all been minimized now you're not really supposed to be out I know in the state of New Jersey where I live, eight o'clock is the curfew. After eight o'clock, you shouldn't be out. You're not supposed to be out and you can get stopped. So of course, anxiety will enter into because that's what happens. Fear is now becoming prominent. But I want to give some scriptures to you today that you can pray over you and your children. Um, if you have children in that abusive situation that you can cover yourself, the blood of Jesus does cover you. I wanted to share with you some scriptures in case you don't know where to go. The book of Psalms is a really good book. If you haven't studied the Bible before, it's a good place to start. They tell new converts to start in the New Testament. But I'm telling you, because you're in an abusive situation, you need to be able to know how to get out of trouble. And so I'm giving you the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms talks about there are many scriptures many chapters in there to talk about help in a time of trouble, how God um, delivers you, um, the scriptures that are comfort you. Um, Psalms uh, 23 is a comforting scripture. Psalms 27 is another one. Psalms 37 is a promise. These are, these are the promises of God that he makes to his people so that when we're in trouble, we stay focused on the word of God opposed to getting into fear. This is where our faith is to be magnified. Um, this is where our faith should be increased. But if you're in an abusive situation, your emotions are all over the place from one time to the next because of what you're experiencing, whether it be physical, whether it be mental. But this is a trying time even the more, like I said, anxiety increase, depression increases, especially when we don't know what's going to happen. And with the coronavirus, a lot of people, um, because the media keeps propagating fear, um, keeps putting out fear, 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 this one has died, that one has died. Um, like that. But the Bible says to us that God has came to give us life and give us life more abundantly. We know that the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But those of us that know the word of God, to understand the power of God, we stand firm in it and we pray for those who are weak. So we bear the infirmities of anybody who may be weak. So we're here praying for you always to get out. So I wanted to share with you Psalms 91, and this is in the message application. Um, uh, King James Version is what I normally would read, but this has a um, plain English way of expressing it. So let me share this with you. So Psalms 91 says this, you do not, you who sit down in the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow, say this, 
God, you're my refuge. I trust in you and I am safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps, shields you from deadly hazards. His huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Fear nothing, not wild wolves in the night, not flying arrows in the day, not disease that prowls through the darkness, not disaster that erupts at high noon, even though others succumb all around, drop like flies right and left, no harm will even graze you. You'll stand untouched. Watch it all from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpse. Yes, because God's your refuge, the high God, your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. You'll walk unharmed among lions and snakes and kick young lions and serpents from the path. If you'll hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'm going to read it again. If you'll hold on to me for dear life, says God, I will get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care. If you'll only get to know and trust me, call me and I will answer. Be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you. Then throw you a party. I'll give you a long life. Give you a long drink of salvation. So that's the scripture I wanted to leave with you. Again, there are other scriptures, Psalms 23, but read the book of Psalms. Meditate. What does it mean to meditate? Talk about it over and over and over. Think about it over and over and over. You need him in this hour. We all do, but especially in your, if you're in an abusive situation, you need God to show up in a big way for you and for your children. And so I pray that for you today. I, I gave this to you so you can pray it for yourself. Take this YouTube uh, video and just go over it and over it. I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you some more information if you um, have anxiety, some practical things you can do. But I'm going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we pray Psalms 91 over everyone that find themselves in these abusive situations. We pray that over the land anyway, but we stay constant and consistent for those who don't have a way out. You said that you, in your word, that you always make a way of escape. So even if they're in the situation, oh God, you can give them a place of refuge. You can give them a place of peace. You can give them a place of hope. And Father, I pray that they will not be hopeless, but their hope will be built in you and that they will begin to trust you like never before. There are some that don't even know you, oh God, but I'm praying now that they will get to know you, that they will open up the Bible, that they will say, Abba, Father, what, do, what much I do to be saved, that they will, and if they are saved, God, that they will rely and depend on you, that you will be their source of strength, their source of peace, their source of hope, their source of joy. And I thank you now because we come into the power of agreement in the United States and all over the world. We are praying for the coronavirus to dissipate, to disappear off of the planet Earth. But even in the midst of that, as we're standing in the midst of it, we thank you for great faith. We thank you, Father, that we are not faltering. We're not wavering. Oh, God, but we're standing and trusting in you as all always. This is not new to us. We've always fought an invisible enemy called the devil, called the demonic force of darkness. And God, we stand firm in power and authority. And we do take dominion over these situations for these people who may not be able to pray for themselves. We stand in the gap and I stand in the gap and I pray, oh God, for healing and deliverance to be theirs, that they will be delivered once and for all into the day of redemption. I thank you for it now. In Jesus mighty name, I Cover them with the blood of Jesus, just like they did the people of Israel in Egypt in the book of Exodus. I cover them with the blood of Jesus over their doors, over their houses, oh God.
God. We plead the blood. We thank you for the blood saturating those atmospheres, atmospheres in the name of Jesus. I thank you, oh God, for you are the true and living God. And there is nobody to get, can come to you lest they come through your son, Jesus. So Father, I thank you for this great opportunity to pray for those who are not able to pray for themselves. Like somebody prayed for me when I wasn't able to pray for myself. I thank you, oh God, for what you're going to do. Let the testimonies ring in the earth today of how God has brought his people out. Let people know what you're doing in the earth today. I thank you for a fresh anointing. Paul coming into America. I thank you for revival. I thank you for bringing these people out of these bad situations. You said that all things work together for the good of us that love you and are called according to the purpose. Father, let purpose show up in their lives. Let destiny show up in their lives. Let them know that they are not forgotten by you, but you have heard their cry and you have come to heal this land. I thank you in Jesus name. I pray and it is so shalom. And I'll come back and I'm going to give you that practical information like I promised. Be blessed, be healed, be delivered, be set free in Jesus' name. Shalom.